Hello and welcome to the Adobe Twitch channel. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist, and it's my pleasure to stream to you for the next couple of hours on a continuing series that I started, was it last week, week before last, can't remember, on um, building websites from scratch using Adobe Muse CC. So this is actually part three, so it must have started last week, uh, actually a week ago today. And uh, this wasn't something I really intended on being a multi-part series, but of course it was just, it was impossible to fit in the first two hours. It was impossible to fit it all in the second two hours. And so now we're in the third two hours, so six hours all together. And we'll see if we finish up today. If not, we'll continue it again on Friday. Uh, but I'm just kind of giving you guys a good, uh, I get this question all the time. When are you gonna do more Muse? When are you gonna show us this in Muse? When are you gonna try to do this in Muse? So we started from scratch last Tuesday. Um, blank page, blank site, blank everything. We created our responsive, um, our responsive master page. And then on Friday, we started putting uh, content on pages. We started doing things like um, images and text and how that all worked. And today we're going to spend some time on the widgets. We're going to be doing more of uh, a little bit more on the text that we left off on. And um, for those of you who are watching the replay or the video on demand, uh, you can watch the video on demands from parts one and two at twitch.tv slash adobe slash profile. And I know I'm a little behind on getting all my last few episodes up on YouTube, but I plan to get those all up, including this one this week, if not today or tomorrow. Uh, so I'll be all caught up on my YouTube channel at terrywhite.tv. Now, if you are watching this as a video on demand or replay, note that this is or was a live show that happens every Tuesday and Friday from 10 a.m. till noon Eastern time. And therefore, because it is live, uh, I will be spending time interacting with people that are here live. Uh, so, for example, uh, I saw some people jump in. There was someone named uh, X Little. Hello, X Little. And uh, let's see here. Who else is here? Victoria. I saw her. I saw Star Crunch. Uh, at Ewan. Um, so, for all the people that are. Uh, that are here that, I, that I've seen or missed, hello, one way or the other. And uh, as they ask questions, I'll look over at my question display and uh, address questions as best I can or as quickly as I can. So um, if you're saying, well, who's he talking to? It was the people that were here live. And if it's a question, I'll try my best to repeat it because I know, on, at least on YouTube, you can't see the questions. On the Twitch replays, I believe now you should be able to see the questions in the chat. Um, hello, the old lion from Israel. How are you? And uh, let's see, take the famous. Uh, hello as well. So with that said, uh, I can do shout outs for the next couple hours, but I think it's probably best that we get to the content. Uh, Winter 07, cat and coffee in hand. Awesome. So let me move my browser, this browser window out of the way, and then I can show you guys my computer. And then we can pick up where we left off. All right, that looks good. Okay. All right, you should now um, be able to see my computer, computer screen. And uh, again, we're just picking right up where we left off before. So I've got Adobe Muse CC open. Uh, my Muse or Muse Mew intro uh, site was the last site we worked on, the site we've been working on for the last few uh, hours. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click that in the recents. It's telling me that two of the links have been modified, which means I probably saved them uh, from Photoshop or wherever I worked on them since the last time I opened the site. So we're just going to click OK. We can always check that out in the Assets panel and it will show us um, which ones are out of date as far as Muse is concerned. So for those of you who are just getting here, who didn't watch anything last week, uh, this is the site we're kind of just playing around with, just kind of showing people how to do things from scratch. 
We created a, what is this, a six page site. So we've got a home page, a products page, a photos page, a videos page, an about us page, and a contact us page. We have the master page, which is what we spent the first day on, which was getting this page together, uh, working with um, uh, vector graphics from, the, from my CC library, bringing in a social media widget for Twitter, uh, bringing in another logo, uh, bringing in the menu widget for Amuse, uh, making sure this all worked in a responsive fashion, creating a mobile menu when it gets down too small for the regular menu. And this is kind of what we did on day one. Then on day two, we uh, just, and again, don't, don't critique the design. This was more about just how to place text and images. Um, and more importantly, image types, and then making those images grouped or not grouped and making them responsive or not responsive. And then we started working with text and type kit fonts and uh, showing the difference between using fonts that can work on the web versus your system fonts that don't work well on the web, meaning that they could get converted to graphics, which is okay if you need a graphic. Um, putting images in a container so that that container becomes responsive and goes full width of the page so this is kind of where we where we left off wait there's one more page here where we left off on uh friday also using a photoshop button as a rollover just using the layers uh using another layered psd so we could actually change the content in photoshop and respect the styling and layer effects and all that so that's where we left off on Friday. So today we're going to continue down the path of working with content, working with the various things that you can do in Muse, especially more of the widgets. Uh, a lot of times I don't get a chance to show many of the widgets because I have to move on and show the other things that, that are in some cases more important. But today we're gonna spend a good deal of the first part of this, or at least maybe, maybe all of it, on just dealing with the widgets, dealing with slideshows, contact forms, um, videos, things like that, all the various things that we can do with the widget. So with that said, um, okay, so Mr. Muneer, if I'm pronouncing that correct, is asking, for Muse, do you just click and drag? Most of it is click and drag, but it depends on what it is you're actually doing. Uh, it is a WYSIWYG um, web editing tool. So there, you don't write code, you don't see the code. Uh, you can insert code, but you don't really deal with code in this program. So from that standpoint, it is a drag and drop experience. So, and we're gonna do some dragging and dropping right now. So let go, let's go ahead and go to the page that we called Photos. And in the Photos page, um, again, these pages are just representing what's on the master page. So, so far we only have these items from the master, but nothing as far as content is, con is concerned. Um, with that said, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the widget library. And in the widget library, the widgets are organized by categories. So there is a buttons, um, you know what? I never really even paid attention to this new category called buttons. High DPI on and off and a state button. Hmm. No, I, honestly, I, I, all this time I've been using Muse, I never really noticed that one popped up. But buttons wasn't always a category. But now there's two buttons for high DPI on and off and a state button. All right, but anyway, uh, Compositions has been there since day one. And a lot of times when you see these widgets, like you see compositions, and there's one called blank, there's one called featured news, there's one called light box display, presentation, and tooltip. In some cases, there really is only one widget. The reason you see five different names is because it starts you off in the five different setups for the one widget. For example, blank. It's just a blank composition. So if I drag that one over, then it's just going to be a blank content area with three triggers. And for whatever reason, most of the Muse widgets have, if, the, if there's a default, it has three defaults. Uh, so there'll be three triggers. And what the triggers mean is that you can put something here, you can put text here, you can move these around, resize them, do whatever you want. 
And when someone clicks on a trigger, it changes what's in the content. Click on this trigger, it changes what's in the content. Click on this trigger, it changes what's in the content. So that was dragging over a blank one. If I were to delete this one and drag over one called Featured News, you can see it's really the same thing. It's three triggers with some sample news and sample photo and sample text that's already just kind of configured the way, feature, the way someone might do featured news on their website. If I delete this one for a minute and I bring over a light box display, same kind of thing where there's the three default triggers. You can add more, subtract, whatever. You get some navigation between the content here. It looks like they put a slideshow in this one. You get some text and that's all it is. It's just, uh, you know, whatever this one was called, light box display with a slideshow built into it. So it's kind of like you'll see a widget and slideshows are the same way. That's why I brought this up where you'll see various choices, but it's really only one slideshow just with some default set up for each, each way you might want to use it. So this again, same three triggers by default, same content area, just designed a little bit differently. Uh, if I go to the last one, or was that the last one? Nope, tooltip. Tooltip's one of my favorites actually. And the reason I like the two, I start off with a lot, a lot of times with the tooltip one is because the triggers have become basically dots. And this is something you see a lot on the internet. You see a lot of it on the internet today where you'll go to a website. Uh, here, let me see if I can bring up an example that I usually show. Uh, one of the examples I've seen this done with, I'm trying to think of the name of the site. It is a company that makes... Oh, God, I'm drawing a blank on it. They make uh, iPhone batteries, and it is the company that makes the one that's like a case where it's a battery in the case, and it's called, oh, God, I'm, I'll have to Google it. I'm drawing a blank. Ah, uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? It's a case like like the Apple one. Mophie. Mophie, that's the one. Okay, Mophie is the one I was trying to think of. And, uh, yeah, they've changed their site. But they used to do this where they had this thing where, um, let me see if I go to shop and see if I can find it here. No, they changed it. Well, and I, that's what happens with sites. You know, you can't keep them forever the same way. But, anyway, they, they typically have this, uh, sit this like huge hero image and as you wait it'll go from one image to the next image to the next image and it'll have the little dots that change as well and if you want to go back to the first one just click the first dot you want to go to the second one click the second dot you want to go to the fifth one click the fifth dot and so they were one of the companies that I would show as an example of someone who had done this and then I'd show them how to do it in Muse um, now they're doing it with a background video, kind of as their hero image on this one page. And as we scroll down, I don't really see anything else at this point. I guess unless I click on something. And then I click on something and I see the other stuff. So, uh, that's one of the ways that it can be done is using uh, this tooltip widget. Because as you click on each thing, uh, it, will sw it will cycle around. Now this one's jumping around. But you can have them all stacked on top of each other so they're all in one spot nice and big. Uh, the other reason I like the tooltip one is because maybe I'm placing an image. So here, let's do this. Uh, let's do a place. Or actually, we can grab one from the CC Libraries. Let's go to CC Libraries. Let me make my window bigger. And once I'm in the CC libraries, let me go to my stock library. I got some stock photos here, and let me find a good one to use. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, well, maybe this, this uh, Shanghai skyline. So if I drag the Shanghai skyline photo out, all right, and then I send it to the back, or put it on a layer behind. Now what I could do is I could take each dot of this widget and put the dot where I want to explain something in the city skyline. So I can move this one. 
at the top of that tower, move this one over this building, and yes, you can add more, so I can add another one, and you can change your colors and all that, and put it over here. And then, as people clicked on the various uh, spots on the city, it would bring up an explanation. It would bring up a photo. It would bring up a whatever you wanted. And uh, that would show, you know, a good use of tooltips. Because back in the old days of, of web design, we would use an image map to do something like this. And the, the JavaScript tooltips are just a better way to go. So that's one of the reasons and one of the ways I like using this particular widget um, so that it could be done that, so I could use it that way. All right, so let's get out of this, delete it, delete this, and let's go to our, uh, here I'll bury this back where it used to be. And let's go back to our widget library. And in the widget library, so that was all the composition widgets. Uh, we'll get to forms in a minute. We've kind of already done menus. We did menus on Tuesday, day one. Uh, panels, are we're going to definitely see those as well. Let's jump to slideshows. So, same kind of thing where we've got five different slideshow choices, but really there is only one slideshow in Muse. You're just turning on or off different options to get to any one of these five, or you're starting with these five. So for example, if I just want a basic standard slideshow, then I can just drag the basic slideshow over and it would give me a basic slideshow with some sample content. So it's giving me, um, looks like it's gonna be three images. It's giving me navigation left and right. It's giving me an image count and it's giving me a description. Now, um, one of the things I always hated about this is that uh, hey, Renee, and uh, I saw someone else, BK Duck, how's it going? Uh, so one of the things I always hated about this is I would have to spend all the time in the world taking out the three pictures that I don't want, the sample pictures, and turning things on and off. Uh, so one of the things that happened as a result of my complaining about having to do this every single time I use this widget, I don't want to have to delete those three pictures every single time, was you get one of two things. Uh, one, uh, here I will delete this one. Actually, we'll leave this one, we'll just pull it over a little bit. One, you now have the ability to just drag over a blank one. Yay, it's blank. It doesn't have the three pictures in it, but it still has some styling and other things going on. Uh, so what they did for all of the widgets is they gave you two options now that you can usually get to with a right click. So if I right click on the slideshow, I get two options clear all styling which means the colors the shading the fonts the all you know all that stuff just make it generic don't put any styling on it and more importantly clear the sample content the sample content's great for a beginner that doesn't know what this widget's for but for everyone else that uses it more than once or twice you don't need the sample content every single time so right now, this one's got three images in it for a slideshow. If I were to select the widget, right click on it and say clear widget contents, now it has no images for the slideshow and I'm okay with that. I could then right click one more time and say clear all the styling and then all of the styling goes away. Now, some of the options are still on like a description, navigation buttons and a counter and those are specific to each widget. So if you uh, wanted to control those, you always go to the widgets flyout menu, and then you can turn those items off. So for example, I don't want captions. I don't want a counter. I'll keep the navigation buttons for now. This is also where you can go in and add the content. You can either drag and drop the photos onto the page, or I'm sorry, onto the widget, or you can just add them here. If you're gonna do more than a couple, it's probably just easier to add them from here. Uh, go to your menu and let's see. I think I got some slideshow stuff here that I can place. And uh, here I'll just grab, I'll grab those four, and this one, this one, this one, and this one. I'll dra grab those eight. So when I say open, it'll bring in those images and make them fit into the current uh, slideshow view. So if I were to preview this page, 
Um, what, what happened is this. Preview page and browser. It'll render out the HTML for this page. Open it in your default browser. And then show you the slideshow. So uh, now, of course, it's the slideshow is by default set to auto advance. I'm not doing anything. It's automatically advancing. Or I could manually go back and say, hey, I want to look at that butterfly again. And then if I wait a few seconds, it'll probably keep auto advancing because auto advance was set as a default. You could turn that option off if you want or just let it keep going. Um, the navigation buttons by default are just these little um, brackets. Um, you can change those characters to anything you want, change the size, move them around, do whatever you want to do. So a lot of times what people will do for the slideshow, if we head back to Muse, is they'll take these brackets, which, okay, and let me explain uh, widgets, and I kind of explained this on day one but with the menu, but let me drill down on this and show you a little bit more. If I just don't have anything selected and I click the widget, I'm clicking the entire widget, the entire slideshow, all of its components, the description, the navigation, the counter, thumbnails, anything else that this widget has. Um, if I want to get to a specific part, like the navigation buttons, then I can click one more time and get to those individual frames. And those can be moved around. They can be put anywhere I want them to be. They could put, be put over the top of the images, off to the sides anywhere where I want them to be. And there are smart guys to kind of help you line those things up. There we go. So now they're lined up. If I want to get in and, and change um, the individual contents of them, I can. So for example, I could go in and I can say that I want this to be 24 points instead of whatever it was, and it will change. So that will go in and let me change whatever I want to change about it. And hang on one second here. And um, again, if I want them to be a different color, I can. If I want them to do be anything else that I want them to be, I can. So for example, if I want them to be white, now they're white. Of course, they don't show very well on the white background, so. Hope you remember it where it is if you can't see the frame anymore. And then I can move them on top of the image like so. And so now if we were to preview this, thank you, Victoria. They're there and now they're visible triangles that happen to be on top of the images or brackets not triangles uh, so totally up to you and if you don't want those let's say you don't want navigation at all then you can at any point just simply say you don't want uh, previous and next buttons or maybe you want previous next first and last so now it's giving you all uh, all four so what these look like is that and that. And let's right align that one. So again, these are just characters. You could change those to be whatever you want. You change those to be images if you want them to be with that are actual buttons. Okay. Um what else was I gonna do? Okay, so let's go here. Let's turn off the uh I don't want the last and next but or actually I do want next I don't want first and last um, oh that's what I was gonna show you so thumbnails thumbnails now notice uh, we started with blank we turned off some options but there was one actually called thumbnails and you can bring that one over as well or you can use any one you want and just simply turn on the thumbnails that's all it is so if I had brought over this one, all it would be is the same one that we just used with thumbnails already turned on. Now the thumbnails themselves, again, are a different part. So if I click on the whole thing, it selects the entire slideshow with navigation buttons and all, or click one more time. Now I'm dealing with the thumbnails. I can move the thumbnails around. I can resize and reshape um, the container for the thumbnails. I don't 
think I can change the actual size of the thumbnails. No. Well, maybe I can. I do that, what happens? Yeah, you can change the actual size of the thumbnails. So you can make the thumbnails bigger or smaller. And since they're all set to edit together, they will edit together as I drag one, they will all change. And it will uh, make the changes for each one. Um, this is also one of the ways that you can delete an image. Um, let's say you want to get rid of a specific image in your slideshow. You brought in one by mistake. You brought in one you don't want anymore. So since these are all color, maybe I want to get rid of the black and white. So I drill down to the black and white and just hit delete. And that one, it will close up the gap with all the other thumbnails. And that one will be gone now from the slideshow. So deleting the thumbnail actually deletes not only the thumbnail, but the actual image as well. So um, I also have the ability to go in and rearrange these. So that's how you would put them in the order you want them to be in, in your slideshow. So if I want to start with the sunrise and end with the, uh, one of the monument or uh, Antelope Canyon shots and maybe another Antelope Canyon shot before that. And we'll put the nature shots together. Now I'm rearranging the order of the slides that I want, to want them to be in. And by the way, as a tip, Sometimes you want to delete an image. Sometimes you want to rearrange, but you don't necessarily want the thumbnails. So what I normally do in that case is turn on the thumbnails, which again is an option in the menu, turn, or the flyout menu, turn the thumbnails on, do everything I want to do, turn the thumbnails off when I don't want them anymore. So use the thumbnails for what they're for, deleting images, rearranging the images, so forth and so on. Once you're done, turn the thumbnails back off and everything will stay the same. So uh, if I leave the thumbnails on and I turn off the autoplay, now when we preview this page, it won't move. It'll just sit there until either A, someone navigates the screen manually or B, they click on a specific thumbnail they want to jump to. So you, you do have the control over this the way you want. Now, this is all the good news about the built-in slideshows and Muse. Now it's time for the bad news. The bad news about the slideshows and Muse is that they are not currently, here, let me click on it just to make sure, make sure they didn't change it on me. They're not currently responsive, unfortunately. <sighs> so what that means is that as your design gets smaller, you can either A, rearrange everything. Like for example, here, well, let's, let's do it. Let's move this over. Let's say we want our slideshow to start over here. And we want it to stay aligned to the right. And we want some text. Uh, we'll grab our type tool. We'll go ahead and pull out a text frame. And we'll say we want our text frame there. And um, we can say my, um, my nature and travel photography. All right, we already learned that we can go in and we can choose a better font from our web fonts and I don't know if I have a better font here but we can certainly choose a different font let's do that and we can of course oh that's a little dark a little dark maybe not black maybe medium medium is a lot better and let's go ahead and change the size and let's go ahead and change the color We'll do a darker color. Okay. All right. So we've got our text in place and, um, and now we've got that aligned to the left. Okay. So, so far so good, but I know what's going to happen pretty quickly in this design and it's going to break because as soon as the browser width gets small enough, those two items are going to collide into each other. So I can, well, first of all, I've got the text 
set to be responsive width. So it will resize. So let's see what happens. Let's start dragging this over. And the text, yeah, it got to a point to where pretty quickly, like I said, where it would break. So now what you really have to decide when you're doing these responsive designs is do you want to have to constantly keep adjusting for this, which means keep adding breakpoints and then making adjustments, or do you want to kind of plan for it up front a little better so you don't have to do as many breakpoints? It's totally up to you. It's your design. So what I could say is, well, do I really need my nature and travel photography to be that large? Yes or no? Make that decision. If yes or no, then do I really need it to the left of this versus on top of it? Because if it's on top of it, then I got a lot more room to play. So you're making decisions on where you want to not have to worry about it. So for example, I could say, right now it's good for any browser with 960 and greater. It's going to be look just like this. But as it gets smaller, then maybe I want to make those changes. So I can say, as we get to this spot right here. Okay, now is where, so now we're at what? Uh, here, we'll add a break point in. We didn't go too far. We're at 851. And now I can start to say, yeah, you know, this is only going to keep getting worse. So maybe I'll make some changes now so I don't have to keep dealing with it as much. So I can say, okay, well, let's move the slideshow down. We don't have to move it down this far. But now we can say, you know what? I want to spread this out. And then we can move the slideshow back up. And maybe you want, the, you want it left aligned, right aligned, whatever. But now that we got it, now we got that much more room. And actually, let me pull this down just a little bit more for a second. Now we got that much room, we got that much more room to play with for things to go bad. So for example, if I keep going, so far so good, so far so good, so far so good, then we're going to hit a point to where that's going to start to wrap. Do I want that or not? If I want that, great. If not, then maybe I want to start making my text smaller. Maybe I want to start doing other things. Maybe I want to move the uh, image down a little bit. But if it's okay, then I would keep going. Now we're hitting, whoa, 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 back up. Now we're hitting the point to where the slideshow is starting to be the issue. The text is fine. We can move the text up or down, make it a little smaller. But right now, the text is not the problem the slideshow is. So I would say right about here is where it's going to break. So we add another break point. And now we've got to make some decisions on everything else. So for example, um, I, could, I could go in here and I can start to say, well, let's make the slideshow um, smaller. So for example, I could go in, uh, I click twice to get, or once and then once again, to get to the actual image frame. And now for the image frame, I can actually just go ahead and make it smaller. Now the image frame itself can, uh, actually, no, I take that back, never mind, I forgot, slideshow. Never mind, forget it, never mind, never mind. Uh, so I can make that smaller and then we can go in and we can start saying, well, we know this is just going to keep getting worse. So let's go ahead and deal with it now. Let's just make these thumbnails go to that size. All right. So now we, we are at that point. So, so far, what would happen is, oh, and I got to move this over too. Move that over with it. All right, so at this point, now we're saying out here, it looks like this. Here, it looks like that. And maybe we want to move this up a little bit more because we can. And then here, it looks like that. And we can again move this up. And go to there. And then on down, what happens next? So we're at 520, which is still larger than phones in this in this case. Oh, wait, 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 one more thing. And at this point, now that we've moved the slideshow from the right side to the left side, time to start aligning it to the other side. So let's flip it over to this side. And now it's going to stay aligned to that side and not, not move as the right boundary moves in. All right, so we'll move over, 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 over. We're good. Now we're good to this point. 
So at this point, I want it to start changing again. So add another breakpoint. And we can go ahead and just simply say, well, we know from here on out, it's just going to get smaller for phones um, or small screens. And so we're at 423. And I know for my designs, I'm pretty much not going to have anything that's smaller than 320. You can, you can, but I'm not going to. So I could simply say, um, looking at the width right now, make this about oh, 315 maybe. There we go. And then as this gets smaller, that's going to run into that. So maybe at this point, now um, I want to, let you in on a text formatting tip. If I change the text right now to a different size, so let me look at it right now, it's 36. If I change it to 24 to make it smaller, well, I've changed it to 24, but I didn't change it to 24 here. I changed it to, let's see here. Oh, no, I take that back. Okay, so... I, was just, I just wasn't sure what the default was. So I changed it to 24. Over here on your text uh, frame options right now, you're, it's set to format the text on the current breakpoint versus the toggle is this. Format the text across all breakpoints. So had I had it on that option and I changed it to 24, it would change it to 24 on the previous breakpoints as well, which I don't want. So it was on the right thing. So just format it on this one and we're good. All right, so now that we've formatted on this breakpoint, and again, we can move this over as well. Uh, now we should be good for our, uh, our smallest size. So if we go all the way down to 320, almost. <laughs> we're almost there. And it's because of the border, so I didn't account for that. Let's go down to our smallest size. And when I say 320 being the smallest size, um, you can, of course, have situations where you're going to have screens that are smaller. But four, or 320 is like the, the smallest smartphone size of a display. It was uh, the iPhone 4 was 320 pixels wide, or, or the original iPhone, I should say. So you're probably not going to have anything much smaller than that with today's smartphones. Um, but if you're designing for other things besides smartphones, then you could absolutely go smaller. Now I could also stretch this out if I wanted to. Since I know that's going to be the smallest size. And we could also move this up. Since I know that's going to be the smallest size. All right, so so again, widgets that don't or that aren't responsive, some are, some aren't. The ones that aren't, you will have to make these adjustments as you go. The ones that are will take care of themselves. So if we were to preview this page in the browser, it'll generate the HTML, show it to me in my default browser. And at that point, I see my slideshow, I can navigate my slideshow, jump to a specific slide. If my screen gets smaller than 9, 960, then it starts to make adjustments. Oops, I went too fast. Starts to make adjustments based on the responsive nature that I did. All right. So RJ Letter is asking, is there an automatic and Hang on, I can't see that one word. Is there an automatic feature converting desktop to mobile? Yes, it's called a responsive design or as Muse sometimes refer to it, fluid design. So that's automatically making it um, work on desktops on down. Uh, or big displays all the way down to small displays, or desktop to mobile. So, yes to all of the above. All right. Um, 
What was I going to do next? Okay, so we did the slideshow. Uh, the slideshow was one of the widgets that isn't a responsive design, so that's why we had to accommodate for it in the various sizes. All right, let's jump out of this page. And that's our photos page. Let's now go to our contact us page. So on the contact us page, uh, typically you would have a form that you want people to be able to contact you. So there are forms here in Muse. You'll see two forms, detailed form, simple form. Guess what? You guessed it, they're the same form. In other words, uh, there's no difference between the simple form and the detailed form other than the number of fields that are on it by default. So the simple form, here I'll drag one over, only asks a few questions. Name, email, and message. The detailed form, Ask name, email, company, work address, city, state, zip, country, message. You use whichever one you want to start with and modify it. So if you only want to start with the simple one, but add company or add country or add something else, all you'd have to do is go to that one and simply say you want to add a field. You can add the, the ones that are built in, the company field, and it will add, by the way, it always adds it to the bottom, which you can, of course, rearrange them. Or you can add one that didn't exist. So I can say, add one called, um, and here we'll get out of it, add one called um, uh, web. Uh, no, I don't want to do that one. Add one called favorite color. All right, so that one didn't exist as a choice. So I made a custom one. Um, so the forms are really just like the slideshow or like the other widgets. They just start you off with some predefined categories or fields. It's totally up to you to start with the, the bigger one or the smaller one and continue to work on it. So for example, if I don't want the bigger one, I can just select the whole form, delete it, and now I'm back down to this one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a couple of things here. Let's do our text at the top. Contact us. And uh, with the contact us, again, we give it a style. Uh, I think we, we had used Scholar before. Let's do a Scholar Bold. And let's make it bigger bigger I think we we're doing 36 point before and we can also make it a color now I'll give you a text tip right off the bat and this is just comes from any of our design tools um, how can we change the size of the form we're going to get into that in a minute so one of the tips for, for from a text standpoint is okay so I've now I've started working on each page and putting headers on each page so I did one here I did one also on the uh, photos page. And I don't know, did I make them the same size? I don't remember. Did I make them the same color? Maybe. I clicked on the swatch. Was it the same swatch? I don't know. So rather than having to guess each time you go to a different page and try and do the same thing, that's what style sheets are for. So that you don't have to keep guessing and doing it from scratch and setting up the same exact thing over and over and over again. Uh, and maybe I want each one and, and just from a, a consistency standpoint to be above the uh, header line or yeah, the header line. And so therefore we move this down. All right. So now I want all my titles to kind of start looking the same. So once you, and yeah, I know they're probably not the same in this case, because I think that one looks not as bold. That's a medium. So now i got to pick which one I like. I like this one better. Okay, so then that was a perfect example. I thought I had done bold. No, I did medium. So now they would be different on each page. So that they're not going to be different on each page, make one to look the way you want it to look. Okay, I got this one looking the way I want it to look. Then go to your paragraph styles and create a new style based on wherever your cursor is or whatever you have highlighted. So based on that, make a new style. And we're going to call it 
um, page heading, headline, whatever you want to call it, heading, yes. So, and notice what it did, size, 36 point, font, scholar sans Latin extended medium, HTML tag, P, right color, so forth and so on. So it's doing all that for me. So now if I go to a different page, all I'd have to do now is put my cursor anywhere in that and click, and now I get the exact same style, exact same size, exact same everything. If I go to a page that I hadn't done one yet, uh, let's go back here and let's go to the videos page. And I create a new frame and I just put in that frame the word videos. And all I do now is click page heading, boom, page videos is now exactly the same as all my other headings. And best part, if I double click and make any changes, um, actually I can't do it that way here, but if you made changes to the style, it would actually change all the other things that were styled with it to be consistent. So that's why we use style sheets, so we don't have to keep guessing, so we don't have to keep doing it over and again, even if we remember what we did manually every single time. You just make the style sheet once, and then keep applying it, and then everything is styled consistently. Okay, back to our contact form. So on our contact form, now that we got the form in place, um, you can, like I said, you can add more fields. So just go to the flyout menu. Um, you can add single. You can add the ones that are built in. So if I want website, boom, I just check off website and I get website. You can add the ones that you uh, are custom, meaning things that don't exist yet. So for example, I could make a checkbox group, and when I make a checkbox group, it's basically check off the things you want. Uh, so we can come in here and we can say that this checkbox group is going to be called um, uh, which web tool. And we can say that you use Adobe Muse or you use um, Adobe Dreamweaver or you I should be able to add another one to those. Let's see. There we go. So add another checkbox. Now, notice what I had to do. Just so we're clear, it's a lot of the a lot of times the widgets will offer you options based on what's selected. So while I was working on the word Dreamweaver, all I could do is deal with things that have to do with Dreamweaver. But once I clicked out of it, click back in, click back in again to select the whole group. Now I get the option to add another checkbox. So in this other checkbox, I could say other. All right, you're using something other than those two. All right, so now the question is, well, I don't want them in the order that they're in now or I don't like the way they're designed, or the color, or the font, or the size, or the anything. Change it. Any aspect of this can be changed. So for example, if I want message to be at the bottom, click, pull message out, move it out of the way, and unfortunately it doesn't auto shift around, so you'd have to select the sections you want to move up, and thankfully for the smart guides, it will kind of keep everything spaced the same. Favorite color, move that up. 14 points apart, or pixels apart. Move website up, 14 pixels apart. Move web tool up, 14 pixels apart. Maybe. There we go. And message can now fit in, or maybe not. 14 pixels apart, but now my submit and status area need to be moved around. And no, they don't have to be on top of each other. If you want some forms, some fields off to the side, move them off to the side. So if you want to scale them, just get to the actual box. Scale the box, and they will scale accordingly. And the ones that can edit together will edit together. And if you don't want them editing together, maybe I want to make favorite color smaller than the rest then I can always go in and say, um, for the entire form, don't edit together. So meaning now they won't edit together, 
until I turn it back on. Oops, favorite color is the one I want. And now I can just make that one smaller and it's not adjusting anything else. So uh, what if I don't like the font that name is in? So let's go back to edit together. And I don't like the font that name is in. So go to name and change it to a different font. So let's change it from Georgia to, I don't know, I don't care. Um, I guess we'll use the same one we've been using, scroller, and we'll make it light. And so they all change. So if you, you don't want to, you want to change the color of the boxes, you want to change any aspect of it, you can. Uh, so now this form, where does it go when someone submits it? And B, how do I protect it from spam? Um, all right, hang on, I'm looking at a comment here. All right, I missed that comment, but anyway. Uh, how do I uh, change two things? Um, where does it go when someone submits it? And uh, what if I want to protect it from spam? Let's, let's talk about the where does it go first. When you click on a form and you click the flyout menu, you can change where it goes Just by typing in an email address or multiple email addresses as to where it goes. Um, they are available already somewhere else. So if you go to, someone's asking where are these episodes available. If you go to um, twitch.tv slash adobe slash profile, you'll be able to see them parts one and two there. Also, if you go to my YouTube channel later today, tomorrow, or the next day, they'll be there as well. Uh, so terrywhite.tv. So either way. Um, so anyway, you, you type in the email address where you want it to go, and you can put in a semicolon to separate multiple email addresses. So if you wanted this, we wanted the results of this form to be emailed to five people, then you put in five email addresses separated by semicolons. Uh, next, there is something called CAPTCHA. There's two types of CAPTCHA from use, reCAPTCHA and BC CAPTCHA. reCAPTCHA is run by Google. So in other words, you would have to go set up an account, uh, just Google reCAPTCHA, <laughs> and set up an account, and you'll get the code necessary to uh, make this work. If you're hosting your site with Adobe's uh, Business Catalyst, then you just choose this one. Uh, so if we if we choose reCAPTCHA, it'll add in the CAPTCHA form or field the verification and you know it won't be this image. They'll get a random image every time that they have to type in the verification before they can submit the form. And uh, when you go set up your account, you put in your public key and your private key that Google gives you when you set up your CAPTCHA account. Um, and once you put those numbers in, your CAPTCHA field will work. So right now my capture field won't work because I didn't put those uh, keys in. And that's the image verification. So that way I will cut down on the amount of spam that could be submitted via my form. Because if you don't put that in, anyone can make a bot that goes out to find forms and just submit garbage. So you'd be dealing with garbage submissions every time. At least this one makes it a little bit less likely that a bot will um, go to your site and start submitting stuff on it. All right, so same thing with the form itself. The form is not responsive. However, luckily, the form itself fits by default uh, within a nice 320 size. So even if I don't do anything, I shouldn't have to do much to this form unless I start putting stuff over here, then I would change how that works. So for example, maybe I do want to put a um, photo over here. Let's grab one from uh, my CC library. Let's say I want to put in a last chance to, you know, submit your form. So I'll drag this over, size it out, and um, I could say that that's going to be my image, and my image is going to responsibly stay to the right. Okay, so now that we got that, 
Uh, what happens? Same thing. So you basically start testing it. And what will happen? Oh, and that one's set to resize, by the way. I didn't change it, but that's fine. It'll resize, it'll resize, it'll resize. And then we get to a part where, oh, it's colliding with the form now. So at that point, I either um, go back to the beginning and make changes to where it doesn't happen. Or, or actually, let me go back to the beginning for one more thing. I don't want this stuff to not do it the right way. So let's do left align there and left align there. Okay. Um, so back to our story. So if we go ahead and resize this, there we go. That stuff stays where it is. And then we run into a problem where, boom, that's where it would collide. So we don't want that to happen. So we go here and we say, add a break point. That's where the design is going to break. And you know what? I don't want to have to keep resizing, moving, whatever. So let me do it once and get it out of the way. So from this point on, we'll move the form down. We'll move the last chance over. We'll say that the last chance is now left aligned and that the last chance no longer resizes because it doesn't need to. It doesn't need to get any smaller. None. And as a matter of fact, we can even make it a little bigger. And we can move it up a little bit. And we can move the form up a little bit. All right, so from here on out, our form should play nicely. And you can center the form, so just so it looks a little nicer. Um, matter of fact, let's go do that. So let's say that we want all this stuff to be centered from here on out. Uh, so we'll move this over. And we'll align it to the center. And we'll move this over. And we'll keep that aligned, center. There we go, like so. And now um, it'll just responsibly continue to center to a spot to where, oh, wait, 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 hang on. I see another problem with the contact us text. The frame starts to get weird. Oh, and by the way, I can just maybe turn this off so it doesn't resize. There we go. Boom. All right, so we'll go here. There we go. And we almost make it down to 320. I think there's one thing that's, yeah, the, the message box is usually too big. But we can get down to this size and either add a breakpoint or we can just go ahead and resize the message box to begin with. And then we don't have to have a breakpoint. So I can just say, hey, you know what? The message box doesn't need to be that wide ever anyway. Or at this breakpoint, we can say make it smaller. And... The only thing you can't size is the image verification. You can't make the image verification smaller, but what you can do, and I've run into this where the image verification box is right at the 320 edge, but then the buttons on the right side are off the page. So what I've done in that case is just, even though I can't make the box smaller, I can move these buttons. So someone said, can you restrict, um, can we restrict the number of submissions? Not with this form, you can't. Someone might make a third party widget that allows you to do that. Okay, so even though I can't make that image verification box any smaller, I can move the buttons out of the way. All right, so now that I've done that, we should be good to go all the way down. And we just might have to adjust and move things over. And that's fine. So I can make my um, let's say my break point there, if I need it to. And just see what else is hanging out here. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, this is too big as well. All right, so let's go ahead and just move that stuff over. And go here. That doesn't need to be as wide. These definitely don't need to be as wide. All right. And now we should be good to go for the rest. And move it over a little bit more to the right. Good, good, good. All right, so we have our, our form in place. 
So again, if we were to preview this page in browser, keep in mind the reCAPTCHA is not going to function until you put that public and private key in. See, it's warning me. I'm missing those keys. Uh, yes, I know I'm missing the keys. It's just going to keep bugging you until you put those keys in. It's just not going to work. Uh, so you're going to give you help. I swear to get the keys from. Uh, but anyway, yes. Okay, I know. I get it. Oh, wow. I won't even display that page. Okay, so it's not going to do anything until you put those keys in. Once you put the keys in for the uh, reCAPTCHA, the form should work fine. So it's missing those keys. Uh, you can even click the learn more on how to get them. And it will take you and show you how to do it, where to get them, and all that. All right. Um, let me try it. Let me preview that one more time. Let me see if I can get past it. Nope. It just will not let me move on. So, if I take this off the form for now, because I really just wanted to show you how to do it, but we don't need it for this, then it shouldn't complain about it anymore because it doesn't have a recapture field anymore. And it doesn't. So now it works. Okay. So we have our nice mobile friendly contact us form. And all is well. And once you have your public and private keys, you can put your recapture back on. And again, I left these um, I left these gray. You can change these to any color you want or not have color. Also, it's kind of nice. Notice it says enter name, enter email, enter company. And here it just says enter text because it doesn't know what you want that to be. So we could go in and we could just simply say uh, you can actually change these. And you can say enter favorite color and um, yeah the rest are okay so we try that one more time all right so now that says enter favorite color and these check boxes should work and if I hit submit it would well Hitting submit won't do anything now. But once the site's on the, on the web, hitting submit will email it to that made up email address of terryatmail.com, which doesn't exist for me anyway. And so we have our one form for all purposes. All righty. All right, let's go back. So that's uh, contact forms. Let's jump out. And now let's talk about, um, let's do, we'll do, hmm, I'm just trying to see which one I'm gonna do first. We'll do videos first. Okay, so videos. This is another one of those that comes up all the time. People wanna put videos on a website. And, I, and Muse, since day one, hasn't hosted videos with your site, meaning it doesn't do self-hosting of videos. Uh, I see it both ways. The Muse team wants to keep it simple. And also some people might have bandwidth restrictions and all that, so they just keep it simple. But I think that I think we should have the option for people that know what they're doing to also be able to upload HTML5 videos. Uh, but in this case, let me show you the way it works and the way around it in case you do want to do something custom. So the way it works is you go into the widget library, you go to the social widget, and in the social widget you have your choice of Vimeo or YouTube. So your video has to be on Vimeo or YouTube for these widgets to work. Now people get a little freaked out about that for, because they say, well, I don't want my video on YouTube for the world to see or Vimeo for the world to see. I just want it on my website. Now, you can put a video on Vimeo and YouTube as unlisted, meaning that it will be not as easily discoverable. I won't say it's impossible, but it will be, 
In other words, you won't have random people just watching your video. Um, and even though it's unlisted, it would still work in this widget. The only thing that wouldn't work in the widget is making it private because YouTube, when you make a private video, restricts the viewership to only spe specific people that you emailed or gave access to that um, particular video. So the way it works, um, I have, most of my videos are on YouTube. I only have one or two on Vimeo, but the way it works, you drag over the widget and um, I'm very honored that your default video is actually one of mine. <laughs> it's one of my earlier um, how to get started with Adobe Muse videos. So it, I'm, I'm built into the app. All right, but anyway, uh, you can just go with that and watch my video. So if I didn't do anything else, here you go, preview page and browser, if I don't change it, then you can host my video on your site, which is probably not what you want. But anyway, this would be my uh, getting started with Muse. Oh, this is really old. Back in the CS days. All right. But we don't want that. Anyway, because that's actually an old video. I've got newer versions of this video, which i got to get the Muse team to at least update that. All right, anyway, so we got the video in place. That's not the video we actually want to use. So which video do we want to use? Or how do you find out? Well, you go to YouTube. And when you go to YouTube, uh, whatever video you want. So let's see. Uh, I could use one of mine. I could use any ones, really. Let's see if there's something fun to do. Um, oh, Key and Peel, they're always funny. Let's see what they got. Okay, whatever video you pick, and I'll pause it, you'll notice the URL is youtube.com slash watch question mark V equal. Whatever's after the equal is the code for that video. So, for example, I would select from here on over. Once I got that code selected, copy it, switch back to Muse, use the flyout menu for the widget and change it from my video to yours or whichever one you want to host. Now you also have other options, allow them to go full screen, show controls, show info, auto, don't do autoplay. No one likes autoplay. Don't do autoplay on videos, please, we're begging you. Don't do autoplay, if it has sound, I should say. Uh, whether or not you want it to loop, uh, reduce branding, so forth and so on. So these are all options you can choose. You can even choose the theme, whether it's dark or light. Um, you can choose whether or not the progress bar is red or white. And um, as soon as I clicked on something else, you can see it brought the video in. All right, so now if I were to um, go back and preview this page and browser, it would then be their video instead of mine. And so now, the person on the site will be able to play the video right on your page. Autoplay, no way. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Guys, we hate it when you autoplay videos with sound. Now, if it's autoplay and it's muted, I don't care. But if it's blaring sound that no one expected to see, or hear, I should say, that's when that's the first thing you're looking for is a way to turn it off or get off the page. So you're, you're doing yourself a disservice by saying, oh, I want them to watch it, so I'm going to autoplay it. The minute they hit my page, it'll start playing. All you're going to do is cause people to want to leave your site or mute the video. Because let us make the choice. We want to watch the video, we click play. If it's autoplaying with sound, it's annoying. People will leave your site as fast as they possibly can and probably won't come back. All right, um, now, one more thing about sizing. The frame um, can be any size you want, and the video will try to accommodate it. Um, if you make it too tall or too wide or too skinny or whatever, then you will have black bars around it, and this is probably not the best frame to show it on. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the aspect ratio to be the same as the video to minimize... I uh, see that black bar and let me pick a different video because I can't because this one has a black frame I can't tell what the frame should be uh, let's pick something else let's 
go back. So all of these have black bars around them. So let's pick. Um, uh, here's a joke about The Walking Dead. So we'll pick this one. You need a website. And it's got an ad on it. So again, we grab everything past the equal sign. We copy it. Go back to Muse. Change it. Paste. Enter. It'll update. Okay, at least this one's got the black bar at the top and bottom, so it's easier to see. So at this point, if I'm trying to eliminate that bar and, and resize this, I just need to pull it down a little bit. And keep going until... I minimize or get rid of that black bar. In other words, I want my video to be the exact aspect ratio of the original video. Right about there. All right, so now I got a video I can move around, and if I scale it, this is one of those times in Muse where you do want to hold down the shift key. Because if I hold down the shift key once I get the aspect ratio right, then it will scale with the right aspect ratio. For graphics, you typically don't hold down the aspect ratio or do the aspect ratio. Now, this is one of the widgets that um, is responsive. So the video widget does resize accordingly if you choose to. So if we were to make this smaller, and here, let's go ahead and align it to the center. It'll keep resizing. Hopefully, it'll resize the right way. Oh, it's only doing the width. That's not good. It is responsive width, not responsive width and height. Uh, so you'll have to decide whether or not that's okay with you or you want to make breakpoints and change it each time. Um, this would not, it, it's never going to distort it. So even if I go down this small, once it renders it, it will still be the right frame size in it, but now it's so small that it's... Um, hard to see. So in this in this case, I probably would say that if you really want your video to look right, it's probably best to go ahead and put the breakpoints in and rescale the video as, as necessary. Yeah, I don't like the resizing. Um, so what I would do is turn off. Here, let's do that. Turn off the responsive width so that it, I don't know what I just did there. Hold on, hold on, I want to re-undo. Oh, I don't know what I just did. All right, I did something weird. That was my bad. All right, let me get it back to the right size. All right, then turn, yeah, turn off the respons responsive width make it none that way it won't resize on you automatically we can go ahead and still say keep it centered and then when you get down to a size where it doesn't fit anymore you would have to make your break points and keep scaling it down um hey beetle jace what's going on man so yeah you'd appreciate this uh since we're resizing video in a responsive design we, we don't want it doing weird aspect ratios as it's doing responsive so in this case uh, we'll add the breakpoint and then we can uh, hold down a shift key and scale it ourselves and we can say how far down do we want to go for this breakpoint until we run into another problem and then we can say you know what that's good until we get to here and you could predefine your breakpoint sizes so you can say you know, 960 all the way down to 768, make it this size. 768 down to four, whatever, make it this size. You can do that as well. Uh, so for example, from here on down, I'd probably want to scale it down again. So maybe something like that. And that way now I'm good. Cause they can all, by the way, they can always click on the video and make it go full screen. So I wouldn't worry too much about the size that it's going to be playing in line. And then last but not least, uh, we would go down to 320, which is what we've determined is going to be our smallest size. And there we go. And if you don't get, notice I didn't get the 320 right on the money because it's just too hard to, to drag that widget and get it right. 
you can always right click on a breakpoint, get to the breakpoint properties, and change it to the number you want it to be, 320. Click OK, and now that's the size. So now we scale this down to fit. And we did not make that. All right, so now um, we start out that size. Now if we preview this page in browser, it should make our uh, responsive video. Again, the video works. The walking and talking dead. You think you're black? I'm black, yeah. <laughs> All right, whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, resize, get to a breakpoint, it rescales, get to another breakpoint, it rescales, get to our smallest breakpoint, we're good to go. So that way we keep a nice, good looking 16 by nine aspect ratio for our video. And our video looks good at no matter what size someone is viewing it on. And again, if they're playing it and they wanna go full screen, they can. So they can always um, play it at full size, even if they don't like how small it is in any particular browser window. All right, so that is, uh, yeah, no vertical. Yeah, we don't want it scaling this way and squinching the video in the middle. All right, next up. So let's go in and Jump over to, so that was our video widget. So, oh, okay, so I was gonna show. So we did that with the YouTube widget, which the Vimeo widget works exactly the same way. You would just use Vimeo videos instead of YouTube videos. Um, but what if you wanna host it yourself? What if you want to put the video in your own server and, and serve it up yourself and, and not have to rely on YouTube or Vimeo? Again, I don't mind relying on YouTube because why should I have bandwidth taken up on my site when YouTube's willing to give it to me for free? If I don't want the video to be seen on YouTube by everyone else, I make it unlisted and just put it on my site. So I, that's worked very well for me over the years, but there may be videos, for example, um, Beetlejace is here, he's a musician. Beetlejace makes his own music, makes his own songs, and guess what? Even sometimes his own songs will be blocked on YouTube. He's playing a song in his own video, puts his own video on YouTube, and YouTube blocks it for copyright because his songs are also available on iTunes. So this that would be a perfect scenario of, he wants to use his own video, but putting it on YouTube is not feasible because of YouTube's automatic blocking of protected content, even though it's his own, his own song. So in that case, if he were doing the site, he may want to host that video so he doesn't run into that problem. So the w one way to do that, and again, it's not built in, it would require a widget. Um, I haven't looked, I know where the widget is that I would go get, but let's see what else is out there. I haven't looked in a long time. So let's go to the regular library panel, not the CC library panel. And from there, we can say, find, find more items online. So that's the old way or quick way to get to it for Muse. Um, so from here, I'm looking at all the Muse ones, the Muse widgets, and I can say uh, HTML video or HTML5 video. I just want to see what comes up. All right, so there is a Muse Themes uh, one, which is the one I would go with. And there's one. Now, Muse Themes is a site that makes themes, templates, um, all kinds of widgets for Muse. But they, they used to sell them individually. Now they sell a subscription to all, you know, you have access to all of their widgets, all of their content. So I'm... I'm already a member of their stuff, so I can get that widget if I want it. But if you want to buy it individually, you pay the seven bucks one time with this company and you get an HTML5 video player. So whichever one you went with, for example, in this case, since I am a Muse Themes 
um, customer. I'm going to show it to you here. Um, you can preview the widget. And then I will show you how to use it. <laughs> you love the black bars on the side. All right. Uh, so, yeah, no, nope, don't want that. Thank you. So they're giving you a summer access, 55 bucks. All right, video highlights. So uh, as you would expect, you and I'll show you this when we get, get back to the page. But anyway, we'll do a live preview. So this is a Muse, the Muse page uh, hosted on their server uh, with a video that is hopefully going to play and is built in being hosted by whoever they host their site with. And I believe this is more about my internet connection than it is uh, this video not playing. But anyway, that's how it, you know, pr pretend there's a video playing there and that video is being hosted by them. All right, let me try and refresh one time before we bail out of this. Or maybe we do it here. That one's on YouTube. All right, so we don't want that one. All right, not sure why that video is not playing, but that basically how it would work. Uh, let's go back to Muse, and let's just move this one down. As you can see, I've already got uh, the Muse themes items loaded here. Now again, these don't come with Muse. I've already shown you the way that you would do it with Muse. Uh, here, let's do, let's just search for video. All right, so uh, HTML5 video player, drag it over. And it's converting it to the current version. All right. So what would happen is you would then go put in the name of the video, the preview image location. So it's basically the, um, the, the frame or I'm drawing a blank on names. The uh, frame that you see when the video is not playing, Jason helped me out, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, and then you would upload at least one format, MP4, uh, but recommend that you upload an mp4 version of the video poster frame that was the word i was looking for uh or and the web m version of the video now why two or three versions of the video because with html5 especially early on not all the browsers supported all the formats so for example safari and Chrome supported MP4, but Firefox wanted WebM. And I forgot what the third choice was, but it was uh, OG, uh, O G, O A G. Uh, so there were three different formats of video that, depending on the browser someone looked at it in, it would ask for. So you'd have to make your video. I'll put an MP4 from whatever tool you use to make the video. And then hopefully either your tool would make a WebM and an OG version, or you would have to get a converter that would make the WebM and OG version. So the third version seems like it's gone away. And now we just deal with MP4 and WebM. Now, some people just say, well, screw it. I'm just putting up MP4s and whether you can see them or not is up to you. You pick the right browser. And again, you can do that, but now you're limiting, potentially limiting, who could see that video. If their browser doesn't support it, they may not even know why they can't see it. Uh, MP4 is definitely a safe choice, but if you really want the safest options, go with MP4 and a WebM version of it. Don't do automatic playback. Show the controller. You can skin it, add colors, and all that stuff. And that's how this theme would work. So you would put in or upload your own videos um, that hosted on your own site to work with this uh, widget. And this would not be hosted by YouTube or Vimeo. This would be hosted by you or wherever these video links go to. So either way, more work, costs a little bit more at least to get the widget. Um, but 
then you're hosting your own videos. And this would be like, like I said, in the case of Jason, this would be what he would do because his videos sometimes get blocked by hosting services because the music in it is copyrighted by him, but they don't know that right off the bat. So he'd have to fight the copyright, get it unblocked, so forth and so on, or simply host it himself. Uh, so that would be the way to do it. All right. Um, and again, it doesn't really matter. I don't care which widget you go with. It's just uh, you would need a third-party widget to do HTML5. Um, can we use WordPress plugins? You can on WordPress, not in Muse, because this is not a WordPress site. This is not a WordPress backend. It's not a WordPress hosting. Nothing to do with WordPress. Um, so, no in Muse. All right, so that's, um, now the only other thing I didn't, didn't see, I don't know if this is responsive or not. I don't know if they made this widget responsive or not. Let's see. They did not. So you'd have to scale this one just like we were doing the other one. You have to scale it each time. Okay. All right, uh, next up, what are we doing on time? Okay, we're almost at the hour. So we did video, talked about YouTube, Vimeo, and hosting your own videos with a third-party plugin or widget. And let's move off this. And okay, let's go to the About Us page and talk about some of the other widgets, uh, like the panels. Um, so the question is, can you program JavaScript in Muse? So let me, let's just answer this right off the bat. You don't program anything in Muse. Muse is for people that aren't coding. You don't write code here. You don't see the code here. You don't touch the code here. If you want to do that, that's why we have Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver lets you do all of that. However, if you know how to write code and you want to write code to do a specific thing, you want to make your own widget, you want to do something else, you can and you have the option to say under the object menu, insert HTML. And that will give you a window where you can either write or paste your HTML code in and it will do whatever that thing is that you wrote does. That's it. That's the, this is your only access to any code in Muse is the code you put in for a specific page for a specific purpose. That's it. Uh, can you copy pictures into Muse? I don't know what you mean by copy pictures into Muse. What does that mean? Um, you can place pictures, you can drag pictures in, you can... You mean copy and paste from the clipboard? Not sure if that's what you mean or not. Um, cause the other thing you'd have to remember, well, here, let me, let's see if this is what you're talking about. Let's go here. Let's open up this. So you mean if I make a selection of this photo like this and then copy it, can I paste that in Muse? Yep. So if that's what you meant, yeah. So you were trolling. Uh, <laughs> all right, I will ignore you. Okay, so next, um, panels. Let's go to back to the widget library. Uh, we'll close that up for now. We did forms. Let's go to panels. So the panels, there are two. There's, and these are actually different. <laughs> There's an accordion panel and a tab panel. We'll do one of each. Uh, actually, we did the accordion panel once. We just didn't use it for content. We used it for the mobile menu. Uh, but we'll drag over an accordion panel. There's one. And we'll drag over a uh, tap panel. There's two. All right, what's the difference? So first and foremost, uh, this is one of the widgets that is responsive. So the accordion, pan uh, accordion panel can be responsive with. Uh, the um, tab panel can also be responsive with. So these, these will respond to the width of your site 
by default, and they will continue to adjust accordingly. Maybe not pretty, but it will adjust. All right, what are these for? Uh, they're really just for content. So, for example, I could either go in and change everything about this and put in my own pictures and text and whatever and change what's there, or, like I showed you before, you can clear the styling and clear the contents and put in everything from scratch. Totally up to you. So we'll do one of each. Let's say we keep this one the way it is and we go in and change it. So let's say that we want to do um, New York. And we'll just start putting in our text, the Big Apple. And blah, 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 blah. I can even say blah, 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 whatever else you want to say. Then we go down to this panel and we change this one to Atlanta. Hotlanta. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then we go to the third one and we can say, I don't know, San Francisco. Sure, why not? And uh, home of the Golden Gate Bridge. Blah, 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 blah. All right. If I want to change some other aspect of it. And by the way, you don't always have to have three. <laughs> you can delete one if you don't want it. You can also, here, let's go to this one. You can also uh, click the plus sign at any time and add more. So I can make this one instead of San Francisco, this one can now be um, uh, Tokyo. And this text is going to, oh, this one doesn't even have a frame in it. Hold on. The other part of the world. Okay. All right, so now the way these work is as you click on one, it reveals what content is in it. You click on the next one, it hides the other ones, reveals what content's in it, so forth and so on. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The, con the content container, this box can have anything in it you want. It can have text, like so. It can have images. So if I want um, my web design image to come in here, I can drag it in. And I can say, you know what, that's going to be in this container as well. And so now that collapses and exposes. So you can have a movie in there. You can have whatever you want in there. What if you don't want the drab, boring gray? Then what you can do is uh, each one of these has states. So the active state in this color is white. Let's say we change the active state color to, um, let's see, we did red at the top so let's change it to a actually lighter color of this blue maybe something like that not that it's more green how about we do it down here all right so that's the active state and then i can say the um normal state which is that gray maybe i don't like that gray maybe i want it to be either nothing or another color so maybe something around the same blue but dark kind of like where we were before okay well, that's fine but then we need to change the text color and we'll change our text color to uh, white I did change that right oh, I need the normal state of that Nope, hold on, hold on. Let's go back to the normal state. There we go. Ooh, I don't know that I could change the normal state like that. Let's see. Should be able to. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Oh, it's going to make me do it one by one. Okay. All right, selecting the frame, switching it to the normal state, changing the color of the text. One by one. 
by one. Because that's just actual text in a frame, it's not a text frame. That's why it's making me do it this way. Normal state, and one more time. That'll teach me to use color. All right, so now that they're changed, New York, Atlanta, San Francisco, Tokyo, and notice how there's always one open. Well, there's, that's an option. You can go in and simply say, can close all. If that is out, if that's turned on, then that means they can all be closed and they can start off closed. And that way they're only exposed when someone clicks on one. Totally up to you. So um, that's the way it would work. If you were picking the accordion, and using the content that was in it. And you just want to change what the content says or what it looks like. The other option is, which we've done before, you have this uh, tabbed panel. And what I want to do instead is simply say, clear all styling, get rid of all that. Clear all contents, get rid of all that. Now, for whatever reason, even when I clear all contents, it still leaves that one piece of text on that one um, tab or one panel but okay that's easy enough to get rid of so here I could say uh, and here we can do what we can do um, iOS and let's go ahead and add another one and we can do Android and we can do another one and we can do uh, Windows and we can add another one. <laughs> we can say Blackberry, because there's always one. And there we are. So now we have our three tabbed panels, which are completely not styled. That's why they're completely just white. And when you click on one, make sure I get this one right, that will put the container, you know, make the container exposed. And, uh, and I don't have examples of phones in here, but I can just drag in this ribbon, for example. And if I click on this one, so that was the, oh, I don't know which one that was. That was the BlackBerry one. Okay, that's the BlackBerry one. Uh, the iOS one, we'll just drag over this one instead. And the Android one, we'll drag over this one. And yes, you can make the frame bigger, smaller, whatever size you want it to be. And we'll drag over the Windows one, we'll drag over this one. All right, so now, iOS, Android, Windows, Blackberry. And if you want, you can style these. So the active state of this, I could say fill that with anything but gray. Because <laughs> we used gray before. Gray is the default. We want to style it with just a lighter version of that. There we go. And so now that should carry across. Yes, it does. And of course, I can style these any way I want. So if I want this to be narrower bigger taller i can to accommodate more stuff if i want in blackberry uh, let's move this up and then we we'll go to this move this around in the container and in that container of course i can always put in a text frame or two or three or more pictures whatever i want so you can put in as much stuff in the container that you want uh, can you add pictures to an accordion you absolutely can i think i did that but in case i didn't um the containers are the containers. You can add whatever you want. So if you want a picture in there, put a picture in there. All right, so now that's a picture in that particular accordion. And of course, we don't want these to collide with each other, so let's move this one back down. All right. So uh, on the web,
this is what it would look like. Ooh, I didn't do the rollover state, but you could change the rollover color as well. Oh yeah, I did put do one in the accordion. So, uh, and if you click it again, it should close. Now wait, see what this is doing? Look at the look at this uh, footer. The minute I open this up, watch what happens. See how I pushed everything down, and then when I close it, it pulls everything up. That's also an option. So, for example, when I select the entire widget, I can say that overlaps items below is unchecked so that means it's pushing everything down if I check that it means whatever it has to it will just simply overlap so even if I move this back up what would happen is if I preview the page in browser In this case, it was underneath it, but it would if I put the second one behind it, it would go over the top of it. So let's do that. Uh, let's send this to the back. Send to the back. All right, so now it's behind it. And so now it should go over the top of it. So... Either push it down or let it go over the top. Usually you see it, you allow it to go over the top when it's a menu or being used as a menu, uh, but normally pushing it down is fine. So accordions and tab panels, and they are uh, responsive. Doesn't mean they don't need to be tweaked, but they are responsive. All right. Let's see, what can we do in the last uh, 17 minutes here? All right, so we got our panels done. Uh, the only other one that I showed you just briefly earlier, um, I'll just recap it, was the under composition. All of these are kind of the same thing, just with different options turned on. The tool tip is again one of my favorites. So let's do the the hero uh, type image with that. Let's pull this down. All right. So what we're going to do is pull over a tool tip. And we're going to change some options on it right off the bat. Let's move this. Make it nice. Move this over. And what we want to do is we're going to take the three dots. Is it going to let me select them one more than one at a time? Probably not. All right, move that down, move that down, and move that down. All right, now that I got them all moved down, notice what's happening. Each one is popping up its respective uh, item in a different spot. I don't want that. So instead, what I want to happen is instead of this position being scattered, I want the position to be stacked. So just put them right on top of each other. So now they don't move around. They just change based on the content. Great. Now that I got it stacked, I'm going to go and clear out all this stuff. So clear all the styling and clear the uh, contents. Okay, great. So now we're just back down to one. So now I can take this one and I can readjust this the way I want. Dun, 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 dun. Get that one nice and big. All right. Now, because that's a container for the one, that means that it can also be, I can put stuff in it like we've been doing, put some text in it, put some uh, graphics in it, or I can use the container itself as a fill. So before I do that, let me go ahead and add two more. I want to let me add my third one. There we go. Okay, two more. So now I got my three uh, buttons back. So we'll click on the first one, go to that container, 
and we can fill it with whatever we want, including an image. So let's go grab, we'll just use one of these landscapes. That'll work perfectly. Open that image up and fill it. And we can also say um, fill, fill, scale to fill. There we go. So now we go to the second one. Same thing, grab that image, fill it with a nut, or grab that frame, fill it with a different image. Not that one, not that one. Eh, okay, that one's good. We'll use that one. And same thing, we'll scale to fill and center it. And now we'll go to the third one and select that container and the same thing. Uh, fill it with an actual image. All right, we'll use that one. And same thing, center it and scale to fill. All right, so now we can take our three dots and move those in a better position. And now we can also select the entire widget, go to the menu for the entire widget, and we can say that uh, we want it to autoplay. We want it to, um, yeah, three seconds is fine. Dun, 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 dun. I'll show target on rollover. My target on roll out. Transition fading. All right, that's all good. Preview page and browser. So someone's asking, can you link the slider to a folder of images too? No. Oh, okay. So uh, my first one loads in, second one loads in, and it just keeps cycling through the three images. And of course, you can tell it not to cycle, cycle longer, so forth and so on. But this is one of the ways those hero-type slideshows are done, where maybe it's not images, maybe it's advertisements, maybe it's images and text, whatever it is. Um, that's one of the ways that this is done on people's sites. And of course, the person can always jump to a specific one they want to see and notice what's happening here it's disappearing when I roll out because that was one of the options I didn't turn off so what I want to do is hide the target none don't hide the target just always show it uh, show the target uh, on rollover is fine and there was one more uh, don't hide all initially show them all all right, so here we go. Preview page and browser. And so it won't hide it, should just show it from the beginning. There it is, boom. Goes to the next one. And if the person interacts with it and moves away from it, it doesn't go away because we're not telling it to hide anymore on rollout. All right. So that's one of the reasons why you might use the tooltip widget in a way that you didn't think to use it because once you see all those boxes scattered about, you think, oh, well, that's not what I want. But there is a stacked option, which is what we're using now. Also, what made this a lot easier to set up than the first time I did a video on this was the clear all contents and clear all styling. Because before, I used to spent like the first two minutes showing you how to get rid of everything to set it up the way you want it. Now, just one right click, we get rid of everything, or two right clicks, we get rid of everything, and then you're free to customize it. And of course, if you want a fourth one, if three is not enough, I don't know why this button, there we go, it's giving me such a problem. But anyway, you can add your fourth trigger in, uh, get it the same exact spacing, and then when you click on that fourth tw trigger, that's uh, duplicated the third one, so on that fourth twi <laughs> twigger, on that fourth trigger, you can go in and then fill that one with a different image. All 
let's see here. Yeah, that's a beautiful one. We'll use that. And same thing, scale to fill. So now, preview page and browser. And we got our fourth one. And I know they're not centered. We need to move them over and center them a little bit better. But they're there. Alrighty. Nine minutes to go. Let's see what we're gonna do next. Let's see what we can do in the next nine minutes. Okay, let's talk about the social widgets. We haven't finished. Oh, actually, this is actually a good thing. Let's do this. Uh, so let's go back to the, oh, we're on the About Us page. Okay, we'll stay here. We'll move these out of the way for now. And, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's not the page we want to be on. We want to be on the Products page. Okay, on the Products page. We'll just move the stuff we did, worked on earlier in the week or earlier in the show. And next, let's talk about social. So I showed you the one social widget. I showed you the, the Twitter widget. Um, that was the Twitter follow. Um, it's really just a matter of dragging it onto the page and putting in your username so that it brings up your following versus the, uh, the Adobe Muse following. I showed you Vimeo on YouTube, or showed you YouTube and talked about Vimeo. But there are some other ones in here that are kind of nice um, for um, not only social, but also from a uh, shopping cart standpoint, because that's the other thing people always ask. So, for example, when it comes to shopping cart, the only one that's integrated with Muse, meaning built in, is PayPal. So the PayPal option is, is here for you to use. Uh, what this means is that let's say I'm selling, uh, let's bring something over. Let's say I want to sell one of my own pieces of work here. So we'll go to my Terry library. And I want to sell, <laughs> sell a picture of me. Uh, here, you guys will love this composite. Let's do this composite here. I want to sell uh, my most interesting man in the world theme <laughs> meme, I mean. And I want, I want to sell that. I'm not going to get much for it. But anyway, let's say I want to sell that. So let's go back to our widget library. All right, stop laughing. Go back to our widget library. We drag over the PayPal one. And notice I get a choice of uh, button types in the menu. Buy now, add to cart, view cart, custom buy, custom donate, custom add to cart, custom uh, view. So I'm gonna say add to cart. So when I say add to cart, I can give it an item number, I can give it a tax code if I want, and I can also give it a shipping cost if I want and a price. So we're gonna sell this for one million dollars. No, we'll sell it for a thousand. All right, so a thousand bucks. Tax rates, let's say seven percent, and shipping costs. You know what? You buy one of these, I'll ship it for free. All right, you get a choice of large or small button. So your choice. Uh, we'll do the small one. Let small one looks a little better. Or you can even add your own image. Uh, as the button type. All right, so now that we've done that, um, adding it to the cart is only half the battle because if they add, if you're selling more than one thing, if you're only selling one thing, just do the buy it now button. But if you're selling more than one thing that people can add to their shopping cart, so let's say that people can also add a second one in, so let's do a different one here. Uh, go to my library. Now let's say I'm going to sell you my shot from the airplane window. Two of my best pieces of work here. All right, so we'll sell that one and we'll sell the other one. Let's move this one down. All right, so we would do another add to cart button. PayPal, add to cart, small. Don't forget to put in your email address for your PayPal. Otherwise, it's gonna, gonna, the money is going to go to somebody else. 
and I'm going to sell this one for 500 bucks. And you give it a name and an item number if you want and a tax code if you want and a shipping cost if you want and that will be this button so the only thing I didn't change on either one of these was the email address and this one I didn't change the item number and everything else is good okay so I make sure the email address was right all right next up uh, then we do the last button we need which is one more not buy now not add to cart view cart because people got to have a way to view their cart to actually check out. Uh, so again, you can make that a large or small button. Really no other options for that other than your email address of who the money should go to or whose PayPal account the money should go to. And then uh, you're all set. So at this point, if we were to preview this page, Uh, we got the ability to add that one to cart, add that one to cart, or view the cart. So if we add that one to cart, it will pop it over and it's going to go to that seller dash email at Adobe. It's going to add in the sales tax and I can update how many I want and so forth and so on. Um, I can go back to that page and add the other one too. And when I add the other one, it actually just added it to the cart, same cart, and I didn't give it a name, but there it is, and now I could check out, or the person would be able to check out. So it adds, integrates a generic PayPal shopping experience for your website, since PayPal is the easiest, most friendly, most people have a PayPal account or can get one easily, uh, experience for simple, small business sites uh, or personal sites. If you need more than that, um, meaning I'm going to be selling hundreds of items, thousands of items, and I need you know more abilities than just PayPal, then we're back to the integrate with a third party. So, for example, if I go to library, uh, back to where we were with nothing. I'm sorry, not library. Yeah, library. Uh, and I say more items online which will take me to the Muse specific section of resources.muse.adobe.com and I say shopping cart. Then it will show me the various shopping cart widgets available for Muse. So this person, for example, made a responsive one. Uh, this person did one for nine bucks, 20 bucks, free, and a tutorial for it. So your choice, there are other ones out there, others that you just add the code to the page uh, where you may not need a widget. So it just really depends on what you need. For my needs, if I was ever selling something to be something simple, quick, easy, PayPal is enough. But if you need more than PayPal, you're actually gonna make a real online store, then you probably wanna check out one of these other widgets to make a shopping cart in your Muse site. So that's most of the widgets. So we're pretty much coming to the end of this. Uh, we're already at the end of it today. But I would imagine on Friday, it probably won't take the full two hours. So I'll have some other content to do after we finish with news on Friday, unless it takes two hours, then we'll pick up that content on Tuesday. But that's pretty much it. Uh, next up in the next 30 seconds is uh, Molten Ink. And I'm sure Molten Ink's got some great creative content to show us. And I hope that you've been getting something out of these last three episodes of how to get started with Adobe Muse. And more importantly, um, how to do it, how to build a website from scratch using Adobe Muse CC. And we kind of integrated the um, responsive stuff along the way. So without further ado, let me go ahead and hand it off to Molten Inc. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. We'll see you Friday back here at 10 a.m. Eastern Time till noon. Eastern Time for Terry White Live, uh, Part 4, and wrapping up uh, how to build a website from scratch with Adobe Muse CC. Take care, everybody. Catch you on the next one.